Hello everyone and welcome to a video on Darwin. Uh, this is the second video for Darwin just to detail some of the changes which you'll find inside uh, the next revision of Darwin which I believe is for uh, version 1960 of Mach 4. Um, it's a couple changes so we're going to take a look first at uh, configuring the plugin itself. Here's our normal Darwin config and again you can refer to video 1 for almost all settings. I just want to show the change. Uh, under output signals, uh, there are 128 signals, however under Mach 4 you're limited to 64 of them. After number 64 they're all ignored with the exception of the final three. Uh, I'm going to take you down and show you uh, signal 126 through 128. Signals 126 through 128 are for um, sending serial data to a remote device and in this case it's for the Arduino based laser control panel uh, which I've built and hopefully other people can use this as well and people using lasers uh, can certainly avail themselves of it. Uh, I'll be publishing all the details for building this Arduino device. It's very easy. Uh, you don't need uh, any electronic skills. Um, my general thought is if you're playing with lasers uh, you're quite capable of hooking up an Arduino to run your laser. So we have a serial data line, uh, signal number 126. It will always be serial data. It will never be anything else because you don't have access to it in any other way. Um, signal number 127 is serial clock. And serial number or signal number 128 is called a digital step flag. Now the digital step flag you may be able to use for other uses or to drive a laser in a different way. Uh, digital step flag will put out a pulse, a step pulse, if any axis takes a step. So um, if you have an X, Y, and a Z on your system, this one digital step flag could be used to uh, signal another device that a motion has occurred. Now the serial clock and serial data are automatically used by the laser mode if you have laser mode selected uh, in Darwin. So we'll get out of that. Those are the only changes that you need to worry about in uh, Darwin itself. Uh, in Mach 4 you do have to worry about a couple changes. You remember that in diagnostic reg file you used to set things for Darwin. You'll find it's now empty. There's nothing there. Under diagnostics you'll find a new entry. Darwin printer port driver. Select it and you will be presented with a um, dialog which shows a checkbox for Arduino laser mode. Uh, again, for you this should be unchecked. Um, there are your settings for MPG1, which encoder is tied to MPG1, what the detent count is for that encoder. Uh, the step width pulse, if you want to increase the width of your step pulse under Darwin, you can make it 1 to 5 here. 1 is the default, which means no additional delay. It'll just be the 1 microsecond that it is. Now your spindle here, you can select normal spindle, which tells uh, Darwin to make your spindle signal simply turn on or turn off. If you select PWM, you'll go to a, um, a PWM signal and you can set the base frequency of it here. I've got mine set for 50 hertz. Uh, in one of my laser modes, I do use PWM as power. Uh, and 50 hertz gives me um, several hundred settings of power, so 50 hertz is good rate, but it, that'll depend on whatever inverter that you intend to use, of course. Uh, frequency control is for sending a frequency signal out the spindle pin. Some people drive their spindles that way. And Mach 4 has its own uh, inherent step and direction spindle, which um, uh, you can use through the Mach 4 documentation. Now, the final thing on this screen, because the screen looks kind of busy, is the laser mode and uh, if you have no interest in lasers you can drop out now uh, kill the video there won't be any information in there for you if you are into lasers let's take a look at what we do offer for that we have checkbox for laser mode once you check the laser mode uh, box it will assume that you have an Arduino hooked up to your uh, breakout board uh, the Arduino panel uses three wires connected to your breakout board, one for serial clock, one for serial data, and the other for step flag. It's the only connection that you need to your system. Uh, once you are in Arduino mode, there are two sub-modes. One is when you're linked to an image and one is when you're not. If we just check our Arduino mode and uh, start to run Mach 4, what will happen is a power word is continuously being sent to the Arduino to control the power of the laser. If the spindle is off, the power is zero and the laser will not fire. 
if the spindle is on, um, the power will be whatever your uh, spindle command word. I have my spindle set to a minimum of zero and a maximum of 100, so if I type S50 and turn on my spindle, I get 50% power. Now, the Arduino mode is smart. It takes into account deceleration and acceleration of vectors. So if you were to, to cut the Roadrunner, for example, you will not burn through on the slow points as you go around tight corners uh, because Darwin will use a time of flight calculation to try to control the amount of energy that is impacted into each pixel or each movement of uh, your system. For every step, Darwin will control the power based on how many steps are going to be taking, taken during the uh, very next short period of time. Um, we'll talk more about that in the uh, form thread for how to build one of these Arduino devices, but let's take a look at uh, image engraving. We can load an image now uh, under Darwin, and uh, pretty much any image will do. Um, here's a picture of my dog, for example. Or uh, we could go back, actually, I think uh, I have one of a lighthouse here which is in the example. Okay, so here's the lighthouse that you can see a video on YouTube being cut at the moment. We've loaded the image and it tells us that we're, uh, the width and height of the image is 900 by 500. If I hit create, I'll get a message telling me change the size of the output from pixels to inches or millimeters. So depending on whether you're in inches or millimeters, now's the time that you enter how big you want it. So if I want the width of this image to be 120, system will automatically change the height to 79.6 to keep it in proper perspective scale. You also have a setting for acceleration ramp distance. At the moment the only uh, type of cut for uh, photographs that's turned on is raster X. That will change fairly soon. But this acceleration ramp means to create g-code that has uh, 5 millimeters on either side or 5 inches depending on what your system is set up to. It will remember these settings by the way so although they're metric the first time you go in uh, by the time you use them they'll be something different. Now we also have a uh, low power correction and a resolution setting in addition to our height and width. Now, again, on type, just leave it on raster X for now, but those spirals and rasters will appear soon. Or you can write your own G-code. So here's what happens. Once we uh, load our image and we set our parameters, I hit the Create button, and the system will ask me for a project name. This is because it's going to create both an image data file and a G-code file in order for you to uh, scan your image. So let's call this one Lighthouse, for example. Just type the word Lighthouse and hit Save. Now the system has uh, completely processed that image and saved it into your G-code folder no matter where you loaded the image from. Uh, and you can do this many times and then go back and pick an image. Now it says at the bottom, success, you may now link to image and load G-code. If you don't link to an image, again, we're in our normal vector mode. And if you were to cut the road runner, it'll give you less power in the corners. It won't shoot when the spindle is not on. And one thing about the Arduino laser mode is it doesn't turn on the laser at all. Uh, until you actually move. Darwin is calculating power per step, so you can turn on your spindle any time. Your laser will stay in tickle mode until it takes at least one step. On that step, it will allow a set amount of energy to be impacted, and then it will again shut off. So you could actually take a joystick and uh, drive your your X and Y axes around on your screen and whenever the um, X and Y position are within the millimeter range of 0 to 120 for width and 0 to 79 for height in this particular case a grayscale power value will be sent to the laser and on that next step it will impact that energy and then stop impacting energy so this is very handy because it means you can turn on your laser and it's not going to burn anything you can leave it on all day and it's just going to stay in tickle mode until you actually move now if we want to link an image instead of doing vector drawings we just pick link image and we're given a list of dims and you can see where we created lighthouse.dim here so we're going to open it now the second I opened it you'll see mock <coughs> came up with a raster XY and g-code actually loaded this g-code is now programmed to cut this lighthouse image we can say okay and get out of here uh, enable the system Now. The way it works is it knows where you zeroed. So I can take my system and jog to a particular spot on my material, zero that spot, regen my toolpath, turn on my spindle, and when I hit run, it's going to engrave that photograph. 
Now you don't have to use the G code that was created by the program. You'll notice the G code if you look on the uh, G code side. is simply a bunch of G1 statements. Um, it G1s the X and Y back and forth. Or you could write a G code program that spirals. Whenever the whenever your uh, current access position is inside this box of the image your laser will shoot a grayscale when it moves the second you move outside the image the laser goes to zero power and will shoot nothing so the G code although Darwin creates the G code it's really just a suggested pattern or a selected pattern but you're free to write any patterns you wish and map yourself into any image that you like as you go um, so I'll conclude this by showing you a small video of it moving and that's all, all that's all you really need to do to engrave an image when you want to stop engraving an image pull up your thing again and hit unlink it'll say image linkage is off and you're now back to a normal laser system again it, uh, the laser will work in vector mode now uh, same rules apply you can turn on the spindle the laser is not running at the moment but when I jog my laser just cut a five millimeter long slice at whatever S word that I used for the spindle um, that is one thing I should mention before you turn on your spindle after linking to a photograph open up your MDI page and pick a feed rate I'm gonna pick 4000 S50 means give me half power at a feed rate of 4000 at which point I would go back to my run and cycle start and run the program uh, when you do that your laser will be happily engraving if you wish to change the uh, level of power that you're putting out in an image uh, you could uh, feed hold stop it type a new feed rate into your MDI or a new power for that matter uh, come back and hit cycle start and it'll just continue where it left on in your image and it won't uh, other than the fact that your image will look a bit different because you change power or feed rate uh, but that's up to you uh, in a laser power is proportional to feed rate so faster you go the uh, more you have to increase your power for example if you're cutting a photograph at uh, what we're doing now 4,000 millimeters per minute at a uh, power of 50 percent if you were to increase to 8,000 millimeters per minute you would want to increase your laser to 100 percent to get the same image one final thing I will mention before we exit and that is on the page for the uh, the low power correction uh, facility this allows you to range an image if I for example uh, put 10 into this it means that an intensity of less than 10 uh, will always be considered white and from 10 up to the maximum intensity of the photograph uh, will be then ranged tighter so as you play with this you'll find it, it actually acts as a contrast control for the photograph that you're engraving uh, that's it. The rest of this, I guess, can be uh, discussed on the thread, so uh, I'll end this with a video showing you a short quickie of uh, an actual engraving. Thanks a lot.